I remember holding his hand and I remember telling him what he meant to me and how much I cared for him and how much I loved him and how my life was better because of him. But by that point, he was so gone. He was just sort of lying there, barely able to speak. And clearly, within the last few hours of his life, The fact that I was living this like closeted life where I couldn't speak about my partner dying at work felt like completely despicable to me and disgusting to me and just... Uh... These people who just wouldn't, who knew what was going on but wouldn't, wouldn't talk about what was going on. That makes me angry just to think about it. Scientists at the National Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta today released the results of a study which shows that the lifestyle of some male homosexuals has triggered an epidemic. Researchers know of 413 people who have contracted the condition in the past year. One third have died and none have been cured. My first real immersion into what would become AIDS, the AIDS crisis, probably around 1985. It was pretty clear that something was going on and people were getting ill and dying. 1985 was probably the first time I sat back and said, wait a second, I might be infected. Federal health officials consider it an epidemic, yet you rarely hear a thing about it. It appeared a year ago in New York's gay community, then in the gay communities in San Francisco and Los Angeles. Most of the country doesn't know about this cancer. Why? Well, I think it's because it's a gay cancer. For a very long time in our society, gay men were thought of as weak and effeminate and sick. And in some ways, we do become weak and sick because this virus is destroying us. There is a one in five chance a victim will die within the first year of the illness. But there is almost no money being spent so far. While the theme of this parade has always been gay liberation and gay pride, the emphasis this year was an appeal for funding to help stop the spread of the AIDS disease. So I think society turned its back on us because it was their opportunity to tell us that what they had thought about us all along was true, that we were weak and sick, and that we should, because of our weakness and our sickness, perish. The doctor had said to me that when he examined me, he said that I looked relatively good, but that he that, that I he would call me with the results. And I got a call in the office to contact him. And I remember going downstairs to the cafeteria where there was a payphone. Remember, we didn't have cell phones, right? And calling him, and then he told me on the phone that I was HIV positive. And that should come and see him in a week or so to just to get a checkup. And I was 25 years old. <laughs> I wasn't going to die. I was going to fight and fight and fight and not going to die. I think that what a new generation of gay men can learn from us more than anything else is how we came together and loved each other and took care of each other. There was a center that was created. There was a place where, that we created. There were places that we created where we came together and helped each other in a way that I don't think the gay community does anymore. Why is it that AIDS continues to affect gay men? Why does this continue despite the fact that there are these medical advances? And how do we collectively take our wisdom from the last 33 years to hopefully create a generation in the future that doesn't have to live with HIV?
I think now, as we're reaching this, this place in our lives where legacy matters and generativity matters, the need to pass on this knowledge is perhaps more important than it ever was for us. I am HIV positive and I have, have been for 11 years, and I'm 31 now. We have to find a way to connect, and what we each have to say is so important because all we have is our stories from regardless of what generation. Those events were horrible and awful and despicable and painful, but this epidemic helped us move forward in ways that we don't really begin to understand still. And for those reasons, I would not undo anything I've been through. All of the pain and all of the loss. I'm proud of myself that I lived through it.